Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skoldi and today we are going to have some fun with the parallax background and the parallax layer. I have a few assets that I have prepared ahead of time that will allow us to play around with it. Now that includes a background, three clouds and two foreground images. Now the end result is going to be beautiful. So let us start by creating our new project. This is a completely empty project so if you wish to follow along you can just download the assets in the description below as well as the end result if you wish to skip ahead and see how it's put together. Now let us start by creating our root node. I'm going to use the control node and then I'm going to rename this main. I'm going to press control s to save. I'm going to save it as main t-s-e-n so let's save. Then I'm going to hit the play button in order to select our main scene because by default no scene have been selected when you create a new project so you have to select it. Let's select main and we are good to go. Now in order to get a parallax effect we need first to select a node that's called parallax background and this node inherits canvas layer and canvas layer works in such a way that it's kind of stuck on top of your camera so wherever your camera is the canvas layer will be there and so will the parallax background which is perfect. So let's select our parallax background. Let's rename this parallax background. Now the reason I am using low capital letters is because it's a standard. Now the reason the nodes themselves when you add them are in capital letters, I believe it is because it's a class. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the way they're coded basically. I could be wrong so feel free to comment if you know better. <laughs> so let's right click our parallax background here. Select add child node. And let's select our parallax layer, which is this one. Now it's worth mentioning you can have multiple layers inside a background. And that is what we're going to do in this video. Now I'm going to start by renaming this parallax layer to background. Now in this layer here, we have a few properties on the right here. The scale and the motion here affects the speed that it moves when your camera moves. Now mirroring sets the distance you have to travel in order for it to repeat itself. But before we do anything here, we're gonna add a sprite image. It's worth mentioning you can also use a texture frame to set your background. However, I prefer the sprite as I feel it gives me the freedom to configure it however I want. But it's all just preferences, you can get the same result using the texture frame. However, for this video I'm going to use the sprite. Let us start by selecting our texture, but before we can select any textures we have to import the textures. Now there are several ways of importing textures, one is just to find the folder of your textures, find the folder of your project and just paste them in there. However, I'm gonna show you another way of doing that, and that is to go into import here, select texture, select 2D texture because that's what we are importing, and select the source textures right here. Now I'm gonna navigate to where I have inserted those textures, which in this case will be found under resources, assets, so I'm just gonna select all of these open them up, select the path of where I want to place them, Now this is our root folder. You can also create another folder which I'm going to do, I'm going to name them assets, choose, and hit import. Now there are extra texture properties we can change if you wish, actually I'm going to do that, I'm going to set repeat to on here because we are going to repeat them. So let's import them, and we're good to go. Now inside our assets folder here, we can simply just drag and drop it there. Another way is to load them by just clicking here and select load. But we now have an image here, a background image, which we are going to repeat. So first I'm going to turn off center in order to make the top left corner of this image the center. So when we play, it will actually fill the top left side of it, albeit only half of the screen here. So in order to make it fill the entire screen, and this is important, if you don't make it fill the entire screen before enabling the parallax scrolling, it's gonna clip, it's just gonna disappear outside the screen and it's gonna reappear, uh, disappear, reappear. So we have to make sure that it fills the screen to begin with. So let's turn on region here, let's set the width of our screen which is the amount we want it to fill with, which in this case will be 512 times 2 and the height is 600. Press enter and it'll automatically insert itself. But as you can see now it is unfortunately not looking right, it's appeared to be stretched after the half here. Even though we enabled repeat, why did this happen? Well, it happened because we have apparently turned mipmap on by default after loading these images. So you have to click the texture here, select edit, go into flags here and enable mipmaps. And select it. And now it looks correct. Good. Let's go back again. 
let us now go into the background here, which is our parallax layer, which you can see right there. We are going to enable mirroring by setting it to the width of our screen, which is 512 times 2. Now you can see a preview here on the right side. This is what's going to enter the screen before it flips again. So before we're going to hit the play button here, we need to get a camera moving. Because if we were to hit play now, nothing is going to happen. You should stand still. That's because in order for a parallax effect to work, we will have to move. So to that end, I'm going to right click main. I'm going to add shell node and find a camera 2D. Double click. Rename this to camera. I'm going to select it as the current here. I'm going to turn the anchor mode to fixed top left. It's the same problem as with the image. You have to make sure the 0, zero point of our node will be on the top left. That is done by setting fixed top left. Let's hit play again. Make sure our camera is actually seeing the entire image. And it is. Good. So let's get the camera moving. And that is done by creating a very simple script. So I'm going to right click the camera. I'm going to select add script. I'm going to name this script camera.gd. It's fine, I can just stay in the resource folder. I'm going to remove all the commenting here. And I'm going to start by enabling a process by writing in set underscore process true. That enables us to use another function which is called func underscore process delta. And this will basically run as fast as it can. It keeps looping and looping and looping. It's processing basically. <laughs> Now delta is just the time between each time it runs. Just something to keep in mind. Not relevant to this task at hand though. So let's just move our camera. In order to move our camera, I'm just gonna do set underscore position. Inside our position here, I'm gonna get our current position by creating a new variable. Pass equals get pass. And this returns the position of our camera at the moment this is run. And this will of course change. So whenever we move, this will change as well. And the reason we're doing this is because we're using set position and those are absolute. So if I now enter a vector 2 here, I get our first x coordinate of the position, then insert the y coordinate of the position. So if I were to run this, nothing would change, it would just set itself to its current position. So let's make it move. So whatever the position it is in, we're gonna increment this by 5 each time this runs. And that's how you make the camera move towards the right. Let's hit the play again to make sure everything is all good. Magic. It moves! But we are not there yet. We have foreground layers. We have clouds to add. Let's do that. I'm going to duplicate this by selecting background, pressing Ctrl D, and Ctrl D again. Because so we have two foreground layers, and they are the exact same size as our background layer. So we can just duplicate the same node and keep the properties with mirroring and everything else. However, I'm going to change the sprite, of course, to the foreground one and foreground two. First, I'm going to rename this. Oh boy. Hey, where are you going? Oh, my, my computer sometimes acts up here. Foreground 1. Foreground 2. Now, the foreground 1 will move a bit slower than foreground 2. But the background will move the slowest because the background is furthest away from the screen. In order to get that parallax effect. So let me select the sprite here. Let's change our texture from our background to a foreground. Let's do the same with our second foreground. There we go. Now, in order for this to work, we will have to change the speed that they move, because now they're moving at the exact same speed, so it isn't much parallaxing going on here. <laughs> We're gonna select the parallax layer. I'm gonna start with the background. I'm gonna set the scale in the x direction to 0 0.1, which will make it move slower. I'm gonna select the scale for the foreground 1 to 0 0.4. And lastly, the foreground 2 to 0 0.8. Basically, foreground 2 will be closest to us. Foreground 1 will be a bit further away, but background will be furthest away. So let's hit the play. Ah, perfect. We are now in the clouds, just floating. Floating away. What about the clouds? What's the difference between the clouds and the background here? Well, for once, in each of these layers here, we only have one sprite, just one background that kind of all the entire screen. What if you wanted individual sprites, individual objects, or whatever, you, you could be anything, leaves in the air, for example. Well, you can just create another parallax layer here. And inside this parallax layer, you'll create multiple sprites. So, let's create clouds. Let's right click clouds, add node, find our sprite node, double click, rename this sprite underscore one, Control D to duplicate this twice. So now we have three sprites. Let's select the sprite. Let's load our first cloud. Let's move this down there. Let's select sprite two. Let's load our second cloud. Let's move it over there. 
Let's select our third sprite, let's load our, and you guessed it, third cloud. Perfect. How do we make this loop? Well, you can use the same method as you did with the backgrounds. However, it's worth mentioning that with mirroring, in this case, is you have to make sure this width is larger than the width of our last sprite towards the right. So if I were to move the second sprite over here, you have, we would have to make sure the width for it to mirror is larger than the edge of this sprite. If it is not, it's gonna clip, it's just gonna disappear while in transitioning between the next one. So let's move the clouds a bit further away here. Let's do like this. There we go. Okay, so I estimate one screen is 512 times 2. So if we add it times 3, we will get another half, and that should be large enough. So let's select clouds here. Let's enter 512 times 3. And now you can see a preview of the next cloud. So I, I see this cloud is a bit too close to this one, so I'm gonna move this one down a bit. <laughs> that looks good enough. So let's hit the play button here. Make sure it works. Ah, perfect. Now we have clouds floating by. And that's how you create a parallax effect, using parallax background and parallax layers. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them below and I will do my best to answer them. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.